the conservation director at Memorial Park Conservancy, and um, Danny Milliken is here as well from our organization. I was with the Harris County Flood Control District for about 12 years um, with some of my other cohorts that are have moved on as well. Um, and then prior to that, consulting and da 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 da. But my background is in geology, so I love Andy all the time. It's all about the soils and the underpinning of what we've got to work with. And then I went on to do a, a master's in landscape architecture and environmental planning, and that kind of brought me into environmental science. Um, so that's my background, and I really appreciate the uh, professors, um, Dr. Here, um, brought interns to our organization. That is following up on his very enthusiastic talk and leading into lunch. I'm going to talk a bit about what we're doing at Memorial Park. Um, with regards to Prairie specifically, um, but I'm going to start a bit with just our overall mission and what um, is happening at the park in general with regards to ecological restoration. So our um, mission, uh, Conservancy, is to restore, preserve, and enhance the park for all Houstonians. All um, is the same definition that Jaime has. Um, it's not just the people, it's the wildlife, um, um, the entire package of living organisms. Um, so Memorial Park Conservancy is aspiring to um, become a world-class park um, and manage it with a partnership in mind and through partnerships with the community. Um, it is a 1,500-acre park. Um, there is a portion of it off the golf course. One of the park is the um, Houston Arboretum and Nature Center, which is run and um, uh, managed by a separate organization. They have their own kind of track on their master plan. Um, and we have our, our separate master plan as well. So the conservancy itself, we um, manage about 1,100 acres of the park that's located in the of Houston, um, very close to downtown, and we have about four miles of Buffalo Bayou Edge on the south side, and um, on the north would be the um, Interstate 10. It's uh, very, you know, sort of locked in within the urban landscape. So historically, um, the park was um, a Camp Logan World War I training camp. Um, turned over to the city of Houston around the 20s, 1924, 19, something like that. And um, this magnitude and the size of the landscape um, is really opportunistic forest um, with a very um, low diversity um, and not much in terms of a um, successional forest. So the mid-century um, populated by invasives or desirable natives that really just blocked out sunlight to rejuvenate anything um, um, in the park. So um, we had um, some, the Conservancy had some work on reforestation um, plots and looking at how to change that landscape a bit and become a more sustainable type forest environment. But then with the drought that occurred in 2012, uh, it really reset the entire landscape in the ecology of the park. And so at that point, um, the Uptown Development Authority, one of the tax increment redevelopment and provided the option to funnel money gallery area into the park work on its infrastructure and, uh, and, and develop the master plan that we're working on now. So when we that master plan in terms of ecological resources, it was a patchwork of isolated and degraded habitats. We do have along the railroad right of way some remnant prairies, and I'll talk about those a little bit. Um, in this talk, and then there were, um, you know, sort of pockets of, of some savanna, but mostly a, that dense um, 
forests that now have been degraded through the drought. So um, in looking at the master plan for the park, um, I think the architecture firm out of Virginia was um, the teams um, with from around the country and in Houston. And we had an ecological um, panel, an ecotech panel, of which many people in this room participated, which was amazing. And the basic underpinning of the master plan was ecological restoration. So it's to connect habitats, provide corridors, and really sort of um, bring back to the park more of a sustainable basis for the landscape. Um, so we had in dark the uh, riparian um, and some of the sort of sloped uh, tributary type areas in the uh, slightly lighter green um, savanna and upland forest ringing the golf course, upland forest around the entire edge um, of the park, and then the prairie in that lighter yellow. Um, so the prairie, as you can see, is uh, fingering into the Arboretum property as well. And so they are, you know, just a year or two ahead of mm -hmm. us on their master planning process, and they're in the process of developing that whole prairie restoration, which is really exciting. Um, so when we look at that um, plan, wh where we want to be in the 10, 20 years, or however many you know, years we have to raise the funds and do the work, um, and then we look at where we are right now with regards to degradation, um, some remnants of really good habitat. Each, you know, it's a puzzle of you know, each piece, each management unit of our park deserves a different type of treatment, whether it's preservation of something that's pretty good, uh, rehabilitation of something that's degraded and really just needs a bump um, through some good um, O&M practices, a full restoration, or uh, straight out reconstruction and revegetation from the beginning. Um, so that's a little bit of you know where we are right now and figuring out where we put our efforts for ecological restoration and how to turn that over to a long-term management that's sustainable and, and won't require too much money or effort. So in our conservation group, um, we sort of set up these goals and objectives to provide sustainable ecosystems. That's um, stabilizing that riparian edge and the riverine areas that are vulnerable to erosion and, um, and a lot of um, sort of water quality dependent um, ecosystem. Uh, create that habitat and that's reducing fragmentation and protecting wildlife. Um, avoiding wetland impacts and reducing runoff, sort of a, a green infrastructure type option. And then, of course, decreasing our long-term maintenance costs and providing an aesthetic and pleasable place for the people. So the Memorial Park really is quite popular. It's um, a lot of people come from many counties surrounding Harris County, as well as right in the city itself. Um, the master plan that was put together um, after the 20, well, basically 2015, it was ratified by the city of Houston, um, shows in, in rendering that uh, sort of uh, fingering of the prairies and, uh, and the future change in some of our um, infrastructure for the people, for the park users. Um, the main portion of the master plan for park use as well as wildlife use is reconnectivity. So the park itself has Memorial Drive cutting right through it and that's always been sort of a problem because people don't really know that there's a whole park to the south of Memorial Drive. A lot of people can ring around the uh, golf course and stick to the running trails in that location um, and there, there is just a whole lot of park that people just don't know about. Um, so the land bridge or the central connector um, in that rendering is um, a key portion of that um, connectivity that we, that we um, are establishing. Um, right now 
down just to give you an update, we have the um, Eastern Glades on the right hand side. It's about a 100 acre park within a park that we're establishing. Um, it has a lot of um, homage to previous master plans for the park that never were realized um, with regards to its landscape. Um, a detention um, slash water reuse pond, um, lake with wetlands, about six acres that will be established and then prairie and or savannah um, habitat mostly within that sort of civic space. Um, so with regards to the um, prairie restoration, long term <coughs> we're looking at not only you know connecting to the arboretum's efforts and having those areas of prairie reestablished um, on the historical sort of upland portions between the, the fingers of riparian and tributaries, but we're also looking at that land bridge and that connector as potential habitat for prairie. Um, and right now we're in design, I'm sure you've heard of the $70 million the Kinders provided, that's matched with an additional amount from with local and our fundraising, so we have about a $205 million package to complete this 10 year mini portion of our master plan, which is all about connectivity. So we're doing a lot of the trail work, connecting Buffalo to White Oak, Buffalo to Braze, that whole um, corridor, and um, completing out the, the Eastern Glades and the Memorial Groves, <coughs> which is another talk for you. So with the land bridge, um, it's, you know, at this point, conceptual, and I'm just showing these uh, very rough um, kind of ideas of what um, it will be um, and how it will be configured and revegetated. And so the um, concept is to have sort of a pocket prairie, wetland savanna type complex to the south of Memorial Drive that um, feeds um, into um, the prairies further to the south and east, or south and west to the Arboretum. So what are we doing to actually get to our prairie rehabilitation effort? Um, we do have at the Memorial Park Conservancy a greenhouse um, within the park, and at this time we're um, starting to partner with other groups to provide um, a good supply of of native plants. And so we're in the process of forming that sort of membership-based co-op or native plant hub, whatever we want to call it, um, that will really sort of be a regional and centrally located resource for native plants. Um, we did utilize this space for the Houston Arboretum and Nature Center to grow out a lot of their plants, like 200,000 plants just this last winter. Um, and then, you know, we have a conservation crew that's in there every week. So it's, um, at this point, we're rehabilitating the greenhouse, getting the <coughs> physical plant fixed up, and then, you know, looking to develop that membership-based um, organization and move forward. Um, we also have prairie remnants, like I said, and we'll be, collect we be we're collecting seed from those locations. Um, so that we're have, you know, providing the sort of endemic plant uh, materials for our projects. Um, we also have had some of our research students doing um, biodiversity studies on those plots and the, the different remnants, and just so that we know what's going on and what type of pollinators are living there. Um, we are in the process of putting together an MOU with the Nature Conservancy to do some of the actual physical reseeding and rehabilitation on that right of way with Aaron Chamala. So, and Jaime. Mm -hmm. So, um, right now it's basically those prairie remnants are sort of isolated within a pretty dominant KR blue stem <laughs> issue problem. Um, so, we, that that's sort of where we're turning towards research on KR blue stem management. Um, and I'm 
added to these slides the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo's logo because they are a major funder for our research at the park. Um, we've uh, finished out a three-year grant with them for a substantial amount of money to get our interns paid off and then also um, research ongoing by different um, academic institutions like Texas A&M um, and Texas State range. Um, so we have work, started working with the Texas A&M Ecosystem Science and Management team uh, under Dr. Snine's direction as the principal investigator on how to replace Old World Bluestem with Native Prairie, which is sort of like the, I guess, the golden question. Um, so we set up in that um, right of way um, for the, the center point easement uh, adjacent to the railroads, um, a number of plots um, with different treatments. And I just wanted to provide to you today just some of their preliminary um, results and, and sort of talk through how that treatment plan was set up. So there are 28 plots. They were all basically shredded down to nubbins and then half of them were applied with herbicide and half were not. Um, there's controls and then you know some of them were seeded just with uh, black little switchgrass and some were then um, uh, directly seeded with natives and then there was cover crops both summer and winter and natives. So it's a whole combination of different treatments to, to see how and what is most successful. So the native seeding, um, this is sort of the standard or you know, a pretty um, diverse native seeding. It came from Texas A&M's um, research, so we are using some of the uh, cultivars. It wasn't necessarily you know, any hand-picked or locally sourced plant material. He did get some from the um, Native American Seed Company, though, too. Um, and you can see, preliminarily, the ones that had no glyphosate uh, um, applied have remained at about an 80% cover of KR blue stem. <coughs> but when you do the uh, treatment, <coughs> treatment. <laughs> and, and of course, this one, this was prior to us ramping up our um, compost pro uh, program. Um, so another talk again, we had those 40,000 trees that were killed during the drought, they were taken out, shredded, and about an acre and a half of 10, 20 foot depth mulch that's decomposed down to five feet. And so now we have all this robust mulch material and now we're starting to brew compost extracts thanks to Danny's um, expertise in that. So there are potential options outside of the herbicide tree, but we haven't gotten there yet. Um, so basically you can see on this that the most successful was the sort of winter cover crop um, with the Native Americans or the native seeding coming up after that. Um, summer cover crop was also pretty successful. Both about the same. So they're still, you know, another year out on their research, and they're going to start doing, you know, specifics on what's coming up and what the densities are and things like that. Um, so, he, you know, in his words, Dr. Spines would say that, you know, it's really not effective to just mm -hmm. seed right into the clayberg. Um, herbicide application is going to be more effective, or more helpful, um, and they're following up, like I, like I said, with the, the quantitative data, species density, foliar coverage, and all that stuff later this summer and into the fall. Um, so here's one of our great interns. I love, you know, they're great. I, I, I just am, like, so amazed, like, you um, They're very enthusiastic about doing what they do. So, um, 
Any specific questions? Let me know. Yes? I don't know if this is 